Hello YouTube and welcome to Psy Prime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. Okay, short video today I just wanted to cover and that is never use the following monster in your campaign! Okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to yell, but this monster triggers me for like, all of the reasons. It's been responsible for multiple player deaths and can easily unalive an entire party and guess what? It shows up in at least two officially published adventure paths, maybe more. Parties always face it at the same level, and it's always an ambush monster, so you can't prepare for it. And the worst part is, it's not even a great story. Your character didn't die defending the world against some great devil, they died to a bunch of bees. The Wasp Swarm is a level 4 creature that is just a joke, and not a joke in the haha, it's laughably easy way. It's a joke as in your entire party gets wiped out and you turn to your GM and say, was that a joke kind of way? Like I said, this monster is featured in at least two adventure paths, I haven't played them all, and as a monster that should be thrown against a level two party as a quote, moderate encounter, unquote. This is a lie. This creature has resistance to all physical damage, with only a slightly lower resistance to slashing damage than to bludgeoning and piercing. Actually, look, here, it resists piercing and bludgeoning damage 7. That means your average level 2 archer with a longbow can only deal a maximum of 1 damage to it. It does take extra damage from area attacks like the Breathe Fire spell or Splash attacks, such as Alchemist's Bombs, but if you don't happen to have those in your party, it's almost impossible to harm. Oh, and its absurdly high reflex save of plus 12 means that it critically succeeds against the best level 2 spellcasters on a die roll of 16 or higher, which means it can avoid your splash or area effect damage 25% of the time by just not taking any damage at all. Rogues, investigators, and swashbucklers are pretty much shut down against it because it's immune to precision damage and it's immune to single target mental effects like Daze because of Swarm Mind. Oh, and casually it can just also throw out 68 damage to you every round at no resource cost. No, I'm serious. Look here. Single action does 2d8 damage with a basic save for half and look at that DC. Even a level 2 high reflex save character class like a rogue with maxed out dexterity succeeds less than half the time, which means, oh look, they also get poison for a d6, then 2d6 damage. Oh look again, the poison also makes you clumsy, further reducing your reflex saves. Also on top of that, the saves are so high that critical failures are fairly likely in low reflex save or low fortitude save builds. And you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I say 68 damage per round to you? No, that's that's not true. I meant 68 damage to you and your three best friends because anyone within the swarm is subjected to the damage and if they fail the save, the poison. And let's remember, failing the save is likely. Okay, you say, what's the big deal? 68 damage though, that's never going to happen. Just run away from... Nope, it's faster than you. 40 foot fly speed. Even if you are an elf with Nimble Elf using all three actions to run away, it can still catch up to you and sting you once every few rounds. Thus, even if you spread out, it can just move from person to person, unaliving one person, then moving on to the next. How about that old spellcaster mantra, target its weakest save? Nope, its weakest save is will, and as we already discussed, it's immune to a whole slew of will save abilities by virtue of having the swarm mind feature. Listen, I know there are parties out there that have beaten these things at level 2, and if you did, I'm happy for you. I've heard of parties with two wizards casting Breathe Fire, the monster rolling poorly, and dying, and that's great if it happened. And if I can stop and be serious for a second, the monster is fine to send up against a level 4 party. By level 4, characters should have striking runes and like almost twice as many hit points as level 2 characters. Striking runes make it easier to overcome its damage resistances, and those extra hit points allow for someone to power through the damage. Also, many classes get increased saves at level 3, which can help fight off those poison and reflex saves. And a spellcaster will have access to rank 2 spells, which is a game changer. But sending these things up against a level 2 party is just a recipe for a TPK. And what's worse, your character died to a bunch of bees, which is just such an ignoble death. 
The Paizo message boards are replete with horror stories of these creatures ambushing specifically level 2 parties and it just being a massacre. Don't use them. If an adventure path calls for them against a level 2 party, I suggest replacing the encounter with 4 giant worker bees or 2 giant mining bees. It's the same amount of XP for a level 2 party and those fights are much better geared for lower level players. Plus, if someone does die to those fights, at least they get to say they went down fighting a bee the size of a St. Bernard, not some plain old normal real world wasp swarm. I'm sorry for the short video today. I've been going through some stuff, nothing to be worried about, just a bunch of appointments which took up some time. But I hope this short video helped a few people out there and let GMs know that this is not a creature to send against level 2 parties. If you like this channel and want to see it grow, please like and subscribe. That tells not only me, but also YouTube that you want to see more of my kind of content. Until then, thank you, good luck, and happy gaming.